Good morning, everybody. How are you doing this morning? Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers, grandmas, uh, prospective mothers, uh, anybody who uh, wants to celebrate with somebody that they're calling their mum. Uh, I called Dan mum this morning. Hey, mum. How you doing? <laughs> Why don't you stand to your feet? We have opportunity to celebrate on this glorious day. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind? Away, it was my tune till I met you. I was breathing, but not alive. All my failures, I tried to hide. It was my turn, yeah, till I made you call my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into Sing together now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all I know. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. The old main you. Jesus, when I met you. celebrating Mother's Day today but there wouldn't be any mothers if there wasn't a good good father right he's the one who bought creation and created the role of mothers and uh, blessed us with mothers and uh, so today as we celebrate and for some of us as we remember our mums just 
take the opportunity to acknowledge God's hand in the family that you were placed in. stories of what they think you're like but I heard tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I never alone you're a good good father to you are, to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you. To I am, to I am, to I am. I've seen many searching, and I see many searching for answers. Searching for answers only you provide Cause you know just what we need before we say your word You're a good, good father to you are, to you are, to you are And I'm loved by you
who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. as I think about Mother's Day and I think about my mum who's no longer with us I remember actually I remember in our household whenever mum would enter the room there was just a change and her name on the tip of my tongue just mum was beautiful We're about to sing about the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. And as beautiful as my mum's name was, Beverly, and as beautiful as it was when she entered our house, um, there's so much more beauty in who Jesus is and uh, what he does for us. Name it 
is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a powerful name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus you have no rival you have no kingdom yours is the glory yours is the name of our name what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a powerful name it is can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus Lord we just want to thank you for the wonder of your name the name above all names. The name that causes every knee to bow, every tongue to confess, because there is so much power. And as much as you are judge, you are also Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you that you are here now. We thank you that you are with us you are in this place changing our lives to be more and more like you thank you for your love thank you for the way that you care you wrap your arms around us in Jesus name we pray Amen. I'm going to invite you to take your seats we've got some media on the screens Genesis 1, 26, God made humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Why don't we take a moment to pray? Father, on this special day, we want to thank you for the way that mothers uniquely reflect and image you. We thank you for the womb of life where mothers so self-sacrificially provide sustenance and safety for a life that is so vulnerable on the inside. Just like you sustain us when we are at our weakest. 
We thank you for the nurturing, the care, and the compassion that mums show in child rearing. Just like you show us compassion and care and self giving love. Lord, we also think of the pain that mothers go through in releasing children whom they once bathed and clothed and fed into a world that is scary and risky. And in the same way, you give us the freedom to choose to be in relationship with you or to turn away. The ultimate act of love, letting go. Allowing something to exist without controlling it or forcing it, but loving in loving release, allowing it to be its own thing. Today we honor our mums. I want to give you a moment just to uh, pray for your mum or a mum figure in your life. Pray a blessing over them. Thank God for them. think of those for whom today is a particularly tough day, maybe those who've lost their mums or those who would so like to be mums, um, but for one reason or another, that hope hasn't manifested. Lord, you are ultimately the source of all comfort. And Holy Spirit, we just pray your peace over them. So, Father, we thank you for our mums today. And, Lord, we continue to lift up the need in our community. We ask that you would use us as your hands and your feet, mums, dads, children, brothers and sisters, as your family. May we bring your kingdom to earth as it is in heaven. May your will be done in us and through us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, welcome, and I would like to extend my uh, blessing of Happy Mother's Day to all of you here today, well, to the mums in particular, um, and even to those of us, uh, those of you joining online, thank you for being with us and choosing to join our service this morning. My name's Dan, and I'm honored to be one of the pastors here at Real Life. Uh, we've got a bit of housekeeping to, to go through this morning. Um, while I'm running through some announcements, you can check in using the QR code, which is also where you'll be able to find opportunity to give to the mission of the church um, or to do such things as fill in a prayer request, uh, let us know how we can be praying for you. Um, all your prayer requests are, are prayed for um, by, by the, the team and um, yeah, we'd love to hear any praise reports too of answered prayer that we can share with the community. Uh, after the service, um, we've got... Actually, no, I'll get to that in a second. Um, if you need a parent retreat, that's through those back doors there, and the ser you'll find the service is, is streamed. And if you're new here, a special welcome. Uh, you look out for people wearing a blue shirt that, say, that says, here to help. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask them for more information. As always, uh, you can stay up to date with what's going on in the life of the church through our e-news, our socials, um, so jump on those if you would like to stay in touch and up to date with what's happening. Now, tomorrow night, here in the sanctuary, we've got our Logan City Leaders Collective, a prayer gathering, uh, where all, a whole bunch of churches in the area, in the, the city of Logan, are coming together to pray. It's one hour, 7 till 8 p.m. Yes, that's right. 7 till 8 p.m., so come along, be part of that. That'll be a great time of some ecumenical prayer. Ecumenical is a big word, it just means like lots of churches gathering together. Um, so that's really, really great. Uh, and our whole tribe leaders meeting is happening on 
the 27th of May. So that's for anybody in the life of the church who is volunteering in a leadership capacity. Come along, be invested in. We believe in investing in leaders. And when the leader gets better, the the whole community benefits. Um, Everyone wins. So if you're a leader, come along to that. Or if you would like to just grow in your own personal development and leadership, you're also welcome. There is no, uh, there's no, you know, secret code that you need <laughs> to get in. You're, you're welcome to come along. So, uh, well, it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be Mother's Day without a few little um, jokes, right? And I was thinking, because if people say that dad jokes are really bad jokes then what does that make mum jokes? Oh, are you, are you getting what I'm... Yep, yeah, okay. Well, maybe, maybe we, won't, we won't go there. Um, what has a bottom at the top, by the way? A leg. Oh. <laughs> Mums know that silence is golden. Unless you have kids. Then silence is suspicious. And we all know that nothing is really truly lost until mum can't find it, right? Mums don't want to sleep like a baby. They want to sleep like a dad. (laughs) Okay, well, we want to honour all our mums here today. Um, So after the service, out in the courtyard, we've actually got some mini muffins and macaroons for mums. And if you have any dietary requirements, if you're celiac, just ask the people at the kitchen and they've got some special things for you. Plus, we'd also love to offer all mums a free coffee from the coffee cart. So head on out there afterwards and make yourself uh, caffeined up. Um, So, yeah. And we've also got a, a special gift for you. In just a moment, I'm going to get the kids to help me distribute some, oh yes, oh yeah, there's lots of things for mums today. We've got food for you, we've got a gift for you which we'll distribute in just a second, and then afterwards, why don't you take a photo with your mum in the, in the photo booth in the foyer. Um, so in a moment, we're going, I'm going to get all the mums to stand, whether you're a grandma, a, a mum, an expecting mum, a spiritual mum, stand and we'll get the kids to give a gift for you. At the same time, uh, anybody who's registered for the Pathways program, this is your chance to head on out across the foyer and into the studio where the Pathways is going to begin. Uh, and while, while we're doing that, while we're distributing all the gifts to mums, why don't you turn to the person next to you and just share a story about your mum, something that you really uh, you remember about her the, or that you love about your mum. Um, so, if I can get all the mums to stand up now, can we give them a round of applause? Great. And kids, do you want to come and grab your gifts and begin distributing? And Pathways people, you can head on out now. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, kids. Well, mums, I hope you enjoy those treats. Now, fellas, at the end of the service when we head outside, remember, with those macaroons and muffins, ladies first. Ladies first. Uh, There's plenty there, but um, not enough for, you know, six each. So (laughs) we'll just start with one. Let let the ladies go first. And while I've got the microphone, I just want to give a special shout out to my mum who's here this morning. I love my (laughs) mum. So uh, I'm going to get Pastor Claire up. Oh, kids, head on out. It's your time to go. Thanks for helping hand out those sweet treats for mums. Have fun down at Kids Life. Awesome. Awesome. Well, why don't we pray? Lord, uh, we thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the chance to gather together and to sit and hear your word preached um, by a wonderful mum. 
Lord, we thank you for Claire and her effort and her work in preparing the message this morning. Will you quicken our spirits to receive what you're saying to us? Open our ears and our eyes. May we be receptive, obedient, responsive. And may you speak through Claire clearly and powerfully this morning. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dan. So, I actually can't see anybody. It's very dark out there. But in, um, which is probably a good thing. In 1965, Bert Bacharach, he composed a song, sung originally by Jackie DeShannon. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just too little of. And then in 1967, the Beatles wrote a song, All You Need Is Love, which Katy Perry actually released an acoustic cover of in 2021. It says, All You Need Is Love. Love, love, love is all you need. I think the Apostle Paul would have agreed with their sentiment. As we continue our When in Romans series, we need to remember that Romans is a letter. It's a very long letter, but it's a letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome. So rather than reading Romans 13 in isolation, we need to read it as part of the whole letter and um, with connections both to what has been before and what is still to come. And Romans 12, which Dan spoke on last week, and Romans 13 are like a smaller subsection of the whole letter. And as Dan pointed out last week, it includes some instructions to the church about how to respond that all that God has done. So now that we've received God's mercy and we understand that salvation is by faith for all people, Paul asks us to consider this question, how then shall we live? How then shall we live? So this section starts in Romans 12, 1 and 2, with this directive which Dan spoke to us about last week. And he wrote, and um, Dan read it to us in the message. So here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings out the best out of God brings the best out of you. He develops well-formed maturity in you. See, Paul explains to the Christians in Rome that the standard for conduct of how then shall we live is set by God, not by society. So instead of just blindly conforming to the latest cultural, chen, um, cultural trends, this community, this community of Christ should look different. So this will be evident in how we see ourselves, how we contribute to the body of believers, how we respond to suffering and injustice, how we treat people, and our attitude to those in authority. When it all comes down to it, says Paul, it's all about love. It's all about love. So in Romans 13, verses 8 to 10, this is what Paul writes. He says, Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. By the way, our neighbor is anybody that we interact with. Whether we know them, like them, look like them, or are related to them or not, they are our neighbor. Paul goes on. He says, For the commandments say you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. These and other commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. 
Love does no wrong to others, so love fulfills the requirements of God's law. See, the ability to love, more than that, the obligation to love is the radical force that Jesus has turned loose by his resurrection, and it has the power to radically transform our world, and it starts with us. As Jesus himself said in John 13, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. If we are Christ followers, then Jesus lives in us. Therefore, we have the power to love. Now, in the New Testament, there are a number of Greek words which we translate as love. There's eros, which refers to like a romantic love. Then there's storge, which refers to familial love, family type love. Then there's philia, which is friendship love, brotherly love. And then there's the word that's used both in the Romans 13 passage as well as the John passage, which is agape. Agape, which is God's active love. It's a, it's a selfless love that's actually concerned with the greatest good of another without expecting anything in return. Agape love isn't dependent on how we feel because it's a choice of the will. Agape love comes from God. It's part of his character. It's who he is. So as we draw close to God and we experience this agape love, we're able to show this agape love to others. And it's this love that shows us as disciples or followers of Jesus. See, God's commands, they were given out of love, out of love for us, and they're fulfilled by love. And that's why Paul writes things like he says, if we love our neighbor, we'll fulfill the requirements of God's law. You see, love won't sleep with our neighbor's wife or husband because of the damage that it does to marriages and relationships. Love won't harm our neighbor because of the hurt that it would bring. Love doesn't steal from our neighbor or, you know, borrow something and then fail to return it because of the, the unhappiness and the inconvenience that it would cause them. Love won't drool over our neighbor's new car or resent opportunities that they receive. You see, agape love goes beyond just not harming our neighbor to looking for opportunities to do good to our neighbor. You see, love, this sort of love encourages and it protects and it supports and it serves and it rejoices with. See, love looks for ways to bless others. So when we come up against difficult people in our life, remember that our first obligation is to love them, because love fulfills the law. So, with love as our motivation, Paul goes on and he concludes chapter 13 by saying, it's time to get going, it's time to give up, and it's time to put on. Romans 13, 11 to 14, this is what he writes. And do this, understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let's put aside the deeds of darkness and let's put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy, Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. So firstly, Paul says that we need to understand the present time. The word Paul uses here is kairos, the opportune time, the appointed time. Understand the significance of this moment because now is the time. We're at a time in history like, like none other. We only need to look around at the world to read news or look at that to understand that we are living in the end times. 
The day when Jesus returns is nearer now than when we first believed. And see, people are searching for hope and for meaning and for purpose. People are hungry for the love and the forgiveness and the freedom that can only be found in Jesus. So Paul says, now's not the time for sleeping, for apathy, for indifference. The hour has already come for us to be awake, to invest our lives in things of eternal worth. See, the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. Our time is running out. Our opportunities are reducing. So now is the time for action. It's time to wake up. It's time to get going. In our home, we have high ceilings. And at the front of the house, we have this large window quite high up. Now, my bedroom is right down the corridor at the other end of the house. But there's a few months of the year when the sun rises and it comes in through that window and it shines directly on my face. It's like a wake-up call at 5 a.m. And the day has started. There is no way I can go back to sleep when the sun has shone on my face. But it's like Paul is saying, the sun is up. It's shining on our faces. So don't waste a precious moment. There's an urgency in Paul's writing. And besides this, none of us know how much time we've got left. We actually live on the edge of eternity. The night may be nearly over for any one of us, regardless of how old or young we are. So Paul's plea is relevant for each one of us. If you're going to follow Jesus, now is the time. If you're going to live a life of love, obeying Jesus, now is the time. Now, don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait until you graduate from school or uni or until the kids start school or until you retire or until you've got time. Start now. Start loving one another now. Start investing in eternal things now because the night is nearly over and the day is almost here. I believe God is calling his people, his church, to wake up. Particularly in the West, I believe God is calling us to wake up. Now is the time. Awake out of our sleep of apathy. Awake out of tolerating sin, of putting our security in things around us, in slothfulness, of negligence, of self-centeredness. It's time to wake up. It's time to get going. It's time to look around and see all the opportunities we have to love one another. I'm embarrassed to admit how many times in my own life, even in this past week, that I have overlooked opportunities to show love to others. Sometimes I think we look for opportunities to love those people out there. Yet we ignore the opportunities that are right around us, that are right in front of us, maybe even in our own families. Paul is telling us to wake up, look around, because every day holds opportunities for us to pay this obligation of love. Every person we meet, we can ask, how can I show them love? Have you been dragging your feet about something? What do you ask God now? Just to place somebody on your heart who you can intentionally show agape love to this week. And then obey. Because of all Jesus has done and understanding this Kairos moment, not only is it time to get going, Paul says it's also time to give up. Romans 13, 12 and 13 says, this is in the NLT version, so remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living because we belong to the day 
We must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarrelling and jealousy. Jesus came to make us new. So when we surrender our lives to him, Paul says, it's time to put aside, put aside the old patterns of behaviour, get rid of unhealthy habits, take off negative ways of thinking, remove the dark deeds like dirty clothes. If we're going to live in love, then there's some things that are going to have to go. Because there are some things that are incompatible with a life of love. We can't do these things and love at the same time. The Apostle John writes this in 1 John 5. This is the message we've heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. So if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So if we're going to live in love, Paul says, we need to give up living for endless self-indulgent pleasures and drunken partying. Doing whatever we feel like, whenever we feel like it. Because if we only live for self and show no concern for others, then we're not living in love. He then goes on to say, It's time to give up indulging in sexual promiscuity and immorality. He says, because this behavior ends up hurting others and it ends up hurting ourselves. So it's incompatible with love. And finally, Paul says, it's time to give up living in a way that causes quarreling, disagreements, and jealousy. We need to ask the question, do our actions encourage unity or division? What indulgences have you been holding on to that are incompatible with a life of love that God is asking you to give up? So Paul says it's not only time to get going and time to give up, but it's also time to put on. So having put off our old selves, Romans 13 verse 14 says, rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. And do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. See, when I got up this morning, I put on my clothes. Um, And thankfully, so did you, I notice. Um, But I put on my clothes with the intention that they would be part of me all the day, that they would go where I go, that they would do what I do. They cover me and they make me presentable to others. This is the purpose of clothes. In the same way, the Apostle Paul is saying to us, put on Christ Jesus when you get up in the morning. Make him a part of your life all day. Intend that he goes with you everywhere that you go and that he acts through you in everything that you do. When someone by faith commits their life to Jesus, we read in Galatians that we're clothed in Christ. Galatians 3 says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Just as an aside, if you are a believer, if you are a follower of Jesus and you've not yet been baptized, now is the time. Don't delay. Come and talk to me afterwards. We will have a baptism service. But this passage in Romans that we read, it goes further than this. And it speaks of the the transformation that results in our relationship with Jesus. Instead of living how we used to, we're instructed to take off our old selves and to put on Jesus, to put on godly characteristics that reflect Jesus. In another one of Paul's letters, his letter um, to the Colossians, he paints a picture of what this looks like. Um, Colossians 3, from verse 12, he says, Therefore, as God's chosen people... Holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. 
And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Notice that this call to put on these godly characteristics is rooted in our status as those those who are holy and chosen and dearly loved by God. See, we're to clothe ourselves with Christ. And as we read the accounts of Jesus in the Gospels, we see his incredible capacity to love and to live in love. So when we put on Jesus, we're putting on the capacity to love. Because remember, love is not just an emotion, it's an action. It's an active love. See, Jesus showed compassion when he reached down and placed his hand on a leper and healed him. We can enter into one another's challenges with care and support. See, Jesus showed kindness to a woman who was consumed by darkness as he spoke words of life and freedom into her. We can practice random acts of kindness towards others and we can speak life into them. Jesus humbled himself and washed his disciples' feet. We can likewise humbly serve those around us. Jesus showed gentleness and patience toward his disciples as they stumbled and fell. We can show gentleness and patience to those close to us who are learning and growing. Jesus forgave those who crucified him. Therefore, we can forgive those who offend us and hurt us. Jesus is love. When we start to pay the obligation to love, he supplies the power to do so. Ray Stedman, um, the late Ray Stedman, he shares that these closing words of chapter 13, Romans chapter 13, have been forever made famous by their connection with the conversion of St. Augustine. See, Augustine, he was a young man in the 4th century who lived a wild life running around with evil companions doing everything they were doing. He goes on, He forbade himself nothing. He went into anything and everything. And as people still do today, he came to hate himself for it. One day he was with his friend in a garden and he walked up and down bemoaning his inability to change. Oh, tomorrow, 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 how can I free myself from these terrible urges within me that drive me to the things that hurt me? And in his despair as he walked in the garden, he suddenly heard what he thought was the voice of a child. Perhaps some children were playing in the garden next door. And the voice said, take and read. Take and read. He couldn't remember any children's games with words like that, but the words stuck. So he went back to his room to the table and he found lying on it a copy of Paul's letter to the Romans. And he flipped it open and these were the words that he read. Romans 13. 13 and 14, let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy, rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it said that Augustine, Augustine said that at that moment, he opened his life to Christ. He'd known about him, but he'd never surrendered to him. But the moment that he did, he felt the healing touch from Christ cleanse his life. And he was never the same man again. He went on to become a significant theologian and writer and had a profound influence on both the Catholic and the Protestant churches. See, Jesus Christ is capable of transforming lives. He gives us all the power to live a life of love, to release in this world the radical force that has the power to change everything around us. It will change our homes, our lives, our communities, our nations, the world, because the risen Jesus is available to us, to clothe us and to live through us. So knowing this, the question remains, How then shall we live? How then shall we live? 
can I encourage you that now is the time to get going. Understand that we live on the edge of eternity. So take every opportunity to invest your life in things with eternal worth and live a life of love. Now is the time to give up. There is nothing about the temporary pleasures of sin that comes close to comparing with the good things that God wants to pour into our lives. So now is the time to give up anything that's incompatible with living a life of love. And now is the time to put on. When we clothe ourselves with Jesus, we are putting on the capacity to love. And as we reflect Christ's love, others will be drawn into a life-transforming relationship with Jesus. Let's pray. Why don't we just take a moment to pause, to listen, and to ask the Holy Spirit to show us how He would have us respond. Paul doesn't mince words in his writing. He says it how it is. He says, now's the time to get going. Now's the time to give up. And now's the time to put on. As I was preparing this message, I felt like God just lay upon my heart that there are some people who feel your, your heart is, your desire is to, to live a life of love, but, but you feel like you're, um, maybe that there's things holding you back, that maybe there's some spiritual bondage, some chains or ropes that are that have you wrapped up, that have you bound, that you just want to be released from. There's things, maybe it's habits, maybe it's addictions, maybe it's patterns of behavior or thinking that you're like, I, I don't want this, but I just keep going back to it. You're like, I just, I just want it gone. I want it broken so I can be free to step into all that God has for me. And so I just want to pray for you. If that is you, I just want to pray. Heavenly Father, I just want to pray for anybody who finds themselves in bondage, finds themselves feeling trapped, um, that there's things that are pulling them down and holding them back and they want to take it off and they, and they try and they, they put things in place, but then they keep finding themselves being dragged back down. And Lord, I just pray that you would come in the name of Jesus, that you would um, that you would break any, um, anything that is binding people, Lord, that if there's any robes, chains that are holding people back, I pray, Lord, that they may become just like brittle twigs that just, just snap and lose all power. For all that you've done on the cross, Lord, the precious blood that was shed, I just pray through the power of your spirit, Lord, through your precious blood that was shed, that you would break the chains that bind people. Lord, that hold them back from stepping into all that you have for them. Would you release them, Lord? I pray that you would set people free today from destructive habits, Lord. I pray that you would set people free from any obsession, Lord, any addiction, any, any damaging thought patterns, Lord. Anybody caught up in pornography, Lord, I pray that you would break that, break that habit in their lives, break the chains that are holding them and pulling them back, Lord. I pray freedom. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would set people free. Lord, I pray you'd give us the courage to live a life of love. Lord, as we take off the old clothes, Lord, you don't leave us naked, Lord. I pray that we may clothe ourselves with you, clothe ourselves with Jesus. Lord, that as we go into our day, in our homes, with our neighbours, with our work colleagues, Lord, with our people that we study with and play with and play sport with, Lord, and socialize with, I pray 
that we may love as you loved, with agape love, with a selfless love. Lord, I pray that you would transform families, transform homes, transform communities, transform our community of Logan as your people live a life of love. Lord, I pray that you would transform this community at real life as we live a life of love towards one another. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the calling, the mission, the vision that you have given us. May we see more people knowing real life in Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Why don't you stand and join with us? We're going to finish singing a song, You Can Have It All. And there's a line in there that says, You can have it all, Lord. Every part of my world, take this life and breathe on this heart that is now yours. Why don't you make this your response now? Thank you. You can have it all, Lord. Every part of my world. Take this life and breathe on. This heart that is now yours You can have it all, Lord Every part of my world Take this life and breathe on This heart that is now Oh, the joy I've found. And oh, the joy I've found. Surrendering my crown. At the feet of oh, the King. Who surrendered everything. And all oh, the peace that comes When I'm broken and undone By your unfailing grace I can lift my voice and sing You can have it all, Lord Every part of my world Take its life and breathe oh, This heart that is now yours You can have it all You can have it all, Lord Every Sing it together. Ready?
Savior, you can have it all. You can have it all, Lord. Every part of my world. Take this life and breathe on this heart. sharing the word with us this morning. Hope you were impacted by that. Go out, be blessed, have a wonderful week. Mums, now's your time to get in for a mini muffin and a macaroon. And just a reminder that tomorrow night is our prayer and worship night, our regular rhythm of that. And we've invited all the churches in Logan to join us. So come, come along for that. Amen. Have a great Mother's Day. Catch you later.